we're back, day nine. Um, we're talking about plants. Are you, do you have green fingers or are you a cactus killer? I definitely have green fingers. I've got a very large garden. Love my garden. Um, house plants. I'm a crazy plant lady. Orchids and I've got uh, lilies and, you know, if I see a plant, I must have it. And I've got... Um, terrariums with plants so yes definitely green fingers for me and I wanted to bring a bit of the outside into the journal and so our topic today is eco dyeing I'm calling it eco dyeing very loosely because the purists and the real eco dyers and the small batch dyers will shake their heads at me because I do very very lazy eco dye but if you're like me and you press for time and you want to do something and you want to do it now and you didn't necessarily plan for it, this works very well. Some parts of the video today will be still photos uh, just to show you how to do it because it's a very simple process. And it's really trial and error with the actual plants what you end up getting. I'm going to start with the actual process today before the prompt, although they quite connected. I did these big pages. I specifically wanted big pages um, and it's on the old type of I don't know computer paper printer paper um, and I did them. That's my first step and my first way of doing it. And as you can see, there's different leaf shapes, uh, there's colour from the flower, it's very grungy, uh, rusty, there's some um, little flower, it's almost like an x-ray, when you do proper eco dyeing you get these beautiful, almost like, I don't know how, you capture the whole flower, uh, but my eco dyeing is okay, it's maybe a bit messy. And then here we get into, um, there's a little leaf shadows and things. So I'm happy with this process. That's uh, some yellow flowers. And again, here we go into leaves and um, colors of the flowers. I've ironed these pages after I did them, so they're quite flat. What you do... You pick flowers, you pick leaves. It is a toss-up as to whether you're going to get a good effect or not. I do find, though, that if you've got a bouquet of proteas or something like that with the full, um, the fame boss, I think the tannins in those flowers give much uh, more reliable effects. So I layered... Um, flowers and uh, foliage between each page like this. I put them together with washing pegs. I have got a dedicated baking tray that is rusty. I leave it outside so that it can, t can continue to rust. And I lay my papers on the baking tray. I pour boiling water over and I weight it down. My weights are old scale weights. They are also rusty. You can also use rocks. And you leave it half a day, something like that. You do nothing with it. Um, and then as you're pouring the water, try and get some of the water between the pages. Some people also lay the flowers, spray with water, lay the paper. Uh, sometimes I remember that, sometimes I don't. The trick with eco dyeing and the, the term that you can search for is mordant, M-O-R-D-A-N-T. It's a dye fixative. And with eco dyeing, the dyes need to stay, the flower dyes and things. And the mordants can be something as simple as um, iron, copper. There's some chemicals. They're natural chemicals, but they're still chemicals. And they're special things that you need to, to order and to have and to prepare and I don't do that. So my rusty baking tray acts as a, a semi-okay mordant. Um, so if you are really interested in eco dyes, it's something to um, investigate. But what I like is, oh, I saw something pretty in my garden. I want to somehow capture it in my journal. Pressed flowers, 
you know, sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. Also, you have to wait long for it to press. This is a very quick way to capture something of nature in your garden. The purples and the yellows, um, orange didn't do too well. Um, there I've got a Echinacea. These are all Canter Canterbury Bells that went nice and pink. This is a wild iris, a Dietes, uh, that went yellow. So really, uh, it's like a lucky packet when you open it. Some people make bundles like this. They tie it with string. They boil it in the, in the whole dye concoction. But paper and water, um, paper doesn't really like water. So you end up, or you have a risk of getting mush. So this is quite a fail-safe method. Um, in terms of eco dye, also think beetroot, um, turmeric, onion skins, cabbage, avocado. All of those also give very nice dyes. You just don't get the pattern. You get a solid dye like you would with coffee or tea. I love avo dye. It gives a beautiful... It's like a pink. You wouldn't think that. I've done a video on avo dye. So you can definitely look at my YouTube channel. Please remember you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do lots of videos um, outside of, of this course. So to look back at my past catalog and things, you can, you can subscribe. The second way of getting something quick and easy in terms of eco dye, and it's it's prettier, it's not as grungy because you don't have the rust, is just ironing your your pages. I spray my pages, so it's a page, lay florals. I spray it with a mixture of vinegar and water. Don't ask me why I read it somewhere I saw it somewhere and it's just stuck in my mind so whether you'll get the same effect with just water I won't comment I've just always done it with a vinegar and I mean vinegar is you've got it in your cupboard it's not something special so it's um, floral spray and you make a sandwich um, or a sandwich of two pages and then you iron between, you need a protective sheet because you need to protect your iron. And I always iron on a towel so that there's a, a give for the, the, the little bits of foliage and things so that it doesn't poke through your page. And you see you get very, very nice effect. So there's a leaf. It's like, almost like little flower stamps. And then there's none of the, the flowers left over. Um... These didn't give you the color, they just gave you the shadow. This was rose petals, so if you've got a bouquet or something, this was a wild grass. And then if you iron on a towel, you end up also embossing. So that is not, that's not flat. You've also embossed the, the foliage into the page. Again, and you can fussy cut these little elements. So that's another way of getting a, a bit of the outside in. This was a fig leaf, so not much color, but you've got a, a full emboss of the fig leaf. So I think cutting it and like inking it or painting it for watercolor splash would be cool. So that is the two most basic ways that I do a foliage elements in my journals or capture foliage element and it's nice if you go for a walk or you go to a special party or something especially in South Africa there's almost always a, a garden so or you get a special bouquet or something that you can you can save a bit of it 
I also liked using, this is dried lavender, um, and then something like, I make wax seals with the little dried bits, and that actually also looks very nice in a journal. We'll get into wax seals and what you can do and can't do on day 16, so look out for that. But that's also another way to bring nature in. Another technique that I'm trying um, for the very first time on camera with you is uh, I've got some paper, I've got some uh, carbon paper, like the stuff you get in receipt books and things, big fig leaf, another paper, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a rubbing. It's stuff you do in nursery school with uh, kids to like. Dinner. I think that's too. Let's just do our fingers. This may work. Patent this if it works. If it doesn't work, maybe it shows up in the video. Maybe it's like it never happened. Okay. Oh, that's super cool. She looks very nice and you can't do that with stamping or something okay that works so another way of I wonder if you roll it through your embossing machine whether that would look cool okay there's a technique for you to uh, to work on and then shall we stamp with a leaf I think that can also probably look cool I inked a leaf uh, with are fine because it picks up small details and I just stamped the page and that actually looks I like it so again uh, I smudged the ink there with the actual ink pad not with the stamping so even the combination of the it's on my scrap paper with this with this nice layer of nature that you I'm playing whoopsie along with you this is a watercolor marker um, you're supposed to store it upright mine fell over um, let's see I think this needs water actually so I'm just dropping some of this ink and letting it sort of wick on the veins of the leaf that I that I ironed, something like that. Um, it's just playing. So I'm just following the veins. So something like that. Just play in your journals. I'm not a mixed media artist. I'm not even an artist. But uh, something comes into my mind. And then I think, let's do it. Why not? I think this just needs softening. I'm going to use one of my eco dyed pages as my base page um, and I'm going to add some of the foliage elements in the pack and then I may add 
this is now very white that's you know I've got the thing with white but I am actually in love with her sleeve but it's a massive contrast let's see what am I journaling about um I am busy planning a rose garden um it's been a work in progress for very long the structures and things are up but planting has been a bit delayed so it may be something about that it may actually just be some record keeping about what's doing well this year what's not doing well uh, the rain we've had that sort of thing remember when we did the theme journal and how to put things together i mentioned that i like adding wild cards this was my wild card and i think now finally uh, the blues and things a bit of coral coral turquoise taupe and true red are versatile colors so you will find uh, so that's uh, uh, coral turquoise there's no taupe here and that's a true red on my nails they'll work with almost anything obviously shades or the intensity and things of the colors need to match so it's a doll with a doll with a doll so i think this will work to to bridge i'm just layering clusters here um including this little this was in my initial things i sorted out um amaryllis it's it's plastic, but it, my emeralds are flowering now. I've got six, I think, and they're looking so beautiful. And they do tie in with Christmas, and the colours are good. So, and then you may think that I'm co uh, covering my beautiful eco prints, but up close, there's still the details on the side, and the other side of the page will be fine to use. So sometimes backgrounds get covered up, and you work very hard in a background only to cover it, but it all adds layers to the page also realized that I have been paused when I thought I was recording and recording when I thought I was paused so um, hopefully the video is makes sense I'm just chalking all my edges but if anything's unclear or there's a step that I didn't show that I thought was okay and you saying what did you do there just just ask just send a message and i'll tell you what happened or i will do a supplementary video to show you we were talking about waxes in the uh, bling it bling it up so i'm gonna do i wonder just a little bit to take the the leaf seems a bit i think maybe the copper um, it's just building on our theme of easy ways to introduce. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I doubt that you can even see it on the camera. But it adds a tiny sparkle, especially for Christmas. Up. tiny bit and that's what's so nice about this wax and you just keep on spreading it and it's almost like just the little flecks remain not it, it's not as solid um do you see now i've started with bling in the journal and i'm back to my my old ways um so that's there's one of those acetate things that i still don't know how to paste nicely so it's just a little cluster of nature um, also it's quite a nice uh, contrast the very matte very natural paper with a little bit of gold um, and now you can journal if you wanted something uh, more feminine because this is, is quite a I'm not going to say masculine but it's it's not a, a pretty uh, florals and things this would be a good time to also use little paper flowers or, or things that you have just spread a, across the page um, and for that probably one of these ironed pages would look uh, work better as a background page so lots of little ways or alternative ways to bring uh, nature your garden um, 
bouquets, plants, uh, that sort of thing into your journal. So I'm going to stick with my succulent journaling card. I've got a little journaling card with a tiny little bee and it's got the reef and you know I like um, echoing elements and symbols. So the colors are good and it tucks in just as you see the little bee and I happen to have a, a bee wax seal that I had made so I'm just going to stick that down. And that is, that's my, my garden page. Definitely not a cactus killer. Um, a nice stamp. Um, love grows. Yeah, something, a stamp, stamp sentiment. Gardening in journaling, garden journals, uh, gardening and scrapbooking, all of those things are very popular themes. So you, you would probably have stickers or stamps or or paper even in your stash and then to add the actual paper or elements made with real foliage adds a nice touch thanks for watching and um, that was day nine i um i often say goodbye and i switch the camera off and then i go mm, maybe i should have or maybe i shouldn't have so i think what i'll do is i'll add a still photo of my page at the end of most videos going forward because now i'm like oh let's just color with some green marker, uh, just highlight some, and I've added some stickers, and I've added some trims, so a uh, page is not really, oh, and I added a sentiment, The little birds wasn't the neatest decoupage because it went over the thick plastic but all in all to me it's fine and i'm so happy that i included my little bird tomorrow is day 10 uh, the the prompt is my house is sanctuary and i think especially for us in in lockdown we realized the value of our houses and our personal space for us and we're going to be working with some some laces and some fabrics. If you feel that you don't have fabric for farmhouse rustic, what works very well is a, a kitchen cloth, a drying cloth, a kitchen rag. Those are nice cottons and normally waffle weave. I've got some blues and reds in. So cut one of those up. I think that'll work. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.